I go to a lot of exotic locations around the world where I have to hike my gear up rocks and through jungles and who knows where. So an obvious question is, what's in my bag? How much does it weigh? What do you use? Tell me what you take, Marcus. Well, let me show you. I'm, it actually depends. It actually depends what I use um, for the purpose. Is it for uh, photography, photo sessions, or is it for video like this? And that's what kind of determines what's in my bag. So I'm going to show you both cases, scenarios. Now, I know you could do a hybrid of both, but generally I do either a photo, a series of photo sessions, or I do a bunch of vlogs. I do them all in a row. So uh, I use the same equipment for that thing. That's so why I make a special. And let me just get to it here. So I'll just show you. All right. So the obvious first thing is a backpack. Backpack is the best way to carry stuff because the weight's all on your back, and tripods and light stands, which I use a lot of because I, well, you'll see. So let's start with the video setup. So this is my portable video setup. What uses up most of the weight and size and weight of stuff that I carry is for photography and video is always the lighting. The lighting is the heaviest stuff and the biggest stuff. The least tiniest little thing that takes up space, that takes almost no space at all, is the audio. The camera and the lenses really don't take up that much. It's always the lighting. So for video, I have to consider um, reflecting sunlight so I could use something like... Now, the only way to use this is if I have an, an assistant, Kara. But if she's in the pictures, then it's obviously not going to do it. But if it's me talking, then she just holds a, uh, a reflector like this just for... It's expandable, but it flops around in the wind. And this is my backup. But generally, I like to have a situation where I have lights on a stand, but they have to be really powerful lights, obviously, because you're competing against the sun. So a collapsible reflector is uh, a good fallback backup thing. Another thing to use if it's not windy, I, sh I showed this in another video of mine, is... An umbrella. Now this you can't use when it's windy. Right now it's kind of windy here, but this is a great way to instantly diffuse. It's already broken, but it's a great way of diffusing sunlight for getting a nice soft look, but it's too windy and uh, I can't use this for that. A person holding a reflector is also not that great when it's windy because the reflector is kind of flopping around in the wind. So the best thing is lights, battery powered lights. And that's what these are. And I made a video about battery powered lights before I'll put the link up down below or up here. The most portable ones with the most power are these, the Stellas. The Stellas are really, really portable. This is the battery pack right here. And this is the light. This is actually how small it is and you put it on a light stand like this and this is a Fresnel this actually increases the intensity focuses so it almost doubles the light output this is a uh, really really great you can adjust the power these are the most portable powerful lights that I use they're expensive though they're not cheap at all but I have like six of these I usually take two of them when I travel like this so that's the lighting the lighting takes up the most. Uh, then there's the camera stuff. Okay, so there's different kinds of cameras that I use. Uh, the main uh, full frame, obviously, is the best quality. If I go to really exotic locations, I mean, I know I like to mess around with the little fun ones, the one-inch ones, and they have micro four-thirds. But if it's like a once-in-a-lifetime stuff like this, full frame is like, you know, you get the best you can. It, now they have cameras like the A7C, which is lightweight. It's about the same size as a... Um, uh, crop sensor, APS-C camera. So for video, I use the uh, the A7C because it's small. It has a flip-out screen. You can see yourself. It has the latest uh, eye autofocus, so it locks on an eye. It tracks it really well. It's got the latest color science. It's got the flip-out screen. It's small. It's lightweight. So for video, I use the A7C full-frame Sony. I actually only use three lenses. I have, I have hundreds of lenses, but when I get, when I get serious and I'm traveling, 
I only use three lenses, really. And these are the ones I use over and over and over. Uh, again, I'm traveling into a nice place like this. I, I don't want to put the background totally out of focus because what's the use of coming here if, you, if you're not going to see the background? So f2.8 or f4 is good enough for that's like I, I probably won't even use 2.8 because i want to see the background to some degree so i use smaller lenses so these are my three travel lenses the 35 1.8 the 55 1.8 look how small this is look at this this is the 35 this is the 55 full frame 1.8. So you can get a nice blurry background with these because it's 1.8. But look how small this is. These don't weigh hard. These weigh hardly nothing. It's amazing. Uh, and then the other frame for portraits, it's the 85 Zeiss, again, 1.8. So all three lenses are 1.8. Um, and, uh, and they're very lightweight and small. So those are my three lenses. I also have a Sony RX100 Mark VII pocket camera. This is my backup camera that I use for just doing videos. I'm shooting with it right now. I have actually a couple of these. I'm shooting with these RX100 right now because it's just such an easy thing to hand care and say, here, push record and film me. So, you know, put it on auto and, and it, it's usually good enough. It's really sharp. So that's my camera for that. And then there's my audio stuff. My audio stuff just fits in a little bag like this. And that's it. It's just a little pocket recorder with a microphone. And um, this is my audio setup. The uh, I usually have two of them, one for backup just in case. And I usually stick it on my, like right now, here's the microphone. And you can see I use Band-Aids to adhere to my body. Band-Aids are skin colored and they're made to stick to sweaty skin and not let go. So there's the microphone. The recorder's in my pocket, little tiny recorder. I'm gonna do an audio series soon, so calm down. I'm gonna talk about the audio stuff at some point. Um, anyway, so that's my audio. And then I have my my uh, video stuff. So my video tripod for putting my camera on a tripod and filming myself. This is the, uh, <laughs> the Exit 72 TRB, super lightweight. I talk about this in my tripod video, which I just did. Uh, super lightweight, goes up to like six feet. When I, I mean, it's, it's not the sturdiest. If you take care of it, it'll be great. I've used these, I have, I've used this forever all around the world. Um, then my tripods. I mean, my light stands. Impact, eight foot, very lightweight again, goes up to eight feet. My LS, my ProMaster LS CT. Uh, which can go in all these different directions. The reason I have this one is because the legs go into all different positions. The legs go different lengths. So it's kind of like a tripod that's actually a light stand. And you can make the legs so they're, they go in all kinds of weird, you know, you can put it on the side of a rock or something. So, cause wherever I go, it's not always a flat surface. So that's why I have at least one of these to, to, uh, hold up cameras and lights. And then I have a, uh, a really lightweight light stand. This weighs almost nothing. It goes up to 74 inches, which is like six feet something. I made a video about the light stands, the really lightweight light stands in my recently. And then finally, my little uh, Osmo action. This is what films the behind the scenes stuff. And it goes up nice and high and has a little stand at the bottom that I just put a rock on it because the, you know, the GoPro doesn't weigh anything. And I just put a rock on the bottom of here to hold it in place. And that's my behind the scenes footage. I got a little silicone cover for it. I love the Osmo Action, Action 2, I think, so much more than the GoPro. Uh, I, I don't want to get into all the reasons why. I just love this little camera. The quality is amazing. It's really cheap. So this is my favorite little action camera. If you're doing behind the scenes footage, I just turn it on and, and, and it does 4K and you can film yourself. It's got a screen on the front. Anyway, I might do a video about that sometime. Let's get into the still photography setup. Okay, so here I am coming up the rock to do a photo session series with my beautiful model, Kara. So imagine her walking <laughs> with me. So here I am 
coming up. This is what I hike with. I got my backpack. I've got my light stands. And I got this. So this is the key to everything right here. This is, again, the biggest, most heaviest thing of and all this photography stuff is always the lighting. Uh, because you want a lot of light to compete with the sun and batteries are heavy. It's nothing to plug into. <laughs> you got to use batteries and batteries are really heavy, especially if you want to produce a massive amount of light. So the thing that I use the most for strobes is the Godox AD600. Great classic uh, flash. Right now I have a, uh, this is a honeycomb grid, which is kind of like a snoot. So you can light up from like 10, 15 feet away, only light up her face instead of making everything light up. I did a video about that. You can see it right here. Put the link down below. Anyway, so I have another one of these in my backpack. Sometimes I only take one, but the best scenario is when I have two. And the best, I like to have one in my backpack because it's really heavy and it, you know, it's easy to carry stuff in your back. But I also like to carry it like this. I have the tripod, the light stand already attached and it, and it good to carry it like this because the weight counterbalances this counterbalances that. So it's actually really easy to carry it like this. It doesn't, it's for some reason, it's a lot lighter when you just carry it like this rather than carrying it just by itself. Anyway, so that's that. Then I have my tripod, my light stands. I don't have any tripods because I don't need them because this isn't video. This is still photography. So the ones that I use are, again, my impact eight footer, my super lightweight, uh, cheap lightweight one that I did a video about, my LSC 10 by ProMaster, my uh, little um, Osmo action, action camera for doing uh, the behind the scenes footage, and this thing. Notice I don't have anything else because no tripods, no white umbrellas, because this is still photography, not video. Something that I use a lot of when there's not a lot of wind is this. This is a uh, umbrella. You put it on a light stand through this hole here, and you put the uh, the light, the AD600, in here, aiming inward so we're, it reflects all over the silver and bounces back out through the diffuser. Now, this will hold up to mild wind but not heavy winds. So when it's, there's pretty, pretty decent winds, I don't use these. I just use a straight uh, strobe and I get good shots with it. And I have done a lot of videos already showing you the type of shots you can get by just using a bare strobe. You don't need soft lights for everything. I mean, yeah, the soft lighting is always better, but if you know what you're doing, you don't really need soft light for everything. So this thing doesn't weigh anything. It gets really big, but it collapses down to something really small. And look at this, that giant thing. And it's cheap. These things don't cost anything. I think they're like, I think they're like 30 bucks or something. It's, it's uh, the Godox uh, 120 centimeter Octa softbox. And look at this, it goes down to something this small. No bones mount needed, really cool. So, all right, so that's my light stands. And now it's in my camera bag. So, now again, this is not for a video. This is for still photography. So all my audio equipment is gone. And I use a different camera this time. Uh, both situations, I use a, a white card. I forgot to mention this before, but a little pop out great, great card for white balancing. You got to have this. If you don't have a great card for white balancing, uh, I don't know how you could live it, live with yourself getting colors you don't like if you don't use this. This is the most important step in, in I think, in photography other than having it in focus is to have the white balance properly done. Yeah, you, know, you can say, yeah, well, you can shoot raw, do whatever you want, but I don't shoot raw. Everything I do is JPEG, 8-bit. I already made a video about that. If you know what you're doing, you don't have to worry about it. Anyways, I don't want to start an argument about that. So, great card. So important. Just get it right the first time. Uh, okay, so now the lighting. So, uh, 
AD 600 ready to go. Uh, bare bulb like this. You can put a diffuser over it if you want to make it a little softer. It protects the bulb too. And I always have a battery on it all ready to go. So all my lights already have a battery on it. That one's got a battery on it. This one's got a battery. And then I obviously have a backup battery. And then I have my secondary light. It's an AD200. This is for uh, maybe using a hair light, you know, a little rim light around the edge here. And for this one, I have this reflector bowl that goes on there. And this goes on a light stand. It's got a little, it comes with a really nice little uh, light stand adapter. The batteries are really small. They're included in here. There's no cords. There's no, you know, dangly stuff. You just put the battery attaches right on here. And I also have another battery that goes with it. So that's that one. It's the AD200. The uh, lens, the camera is different than the last camera because this one, this is more for still photography. The reason I don't use the A7C is because the viewfinder sucks. It's a really tiny viewfinder. And when you're, and when you're in the bright sunlight, you really can't see the quality picture that you want. So I need a better eye, eyepiece, a better viewfinder. So in this case, I'm using an A7 III. It's got a really good viewfinder, high quality. It's much bigger, blocks out the sun a lot better. Um, and you can upgrade the firmware. So it's got the eye tracking and everything. So A7 III is a good, uh, affordable full frame. that has got a really good eyepiece on it. Anyway, and I don't need the flip out screen because I'm not doing video with it. It just has this, which is good for holding like this when I'm doing pictures. So this is more for still pictures. The A7C is more for video. Same three lenses, the 55, wait, the 35 1.8, the 55 1.8, and the 85 Zeiss 1.8. Great lenses, small, lightweight, really sharp, and they're all 1.8. So if you want the blurry background, you can still get it. The uh, trigger, the flash trigger, is a Godox X1. which goes on here. And this can tr trigger up to three flashes, I believe. Uh, so I can do both these 600s and my 200, all different settings, and I can adjust it from the camera. I don't have to actually go up to the, the lights and adjust it. Uh, and that's it. I think pretty much that's my setup. Of course, some spare batteries for the, the camera. Um, and I always have my R100, RX100 as a backup, just in case something fails. It's always good to have a backup. And, uh, oh yeah, and then I have my lens cleaning packs, lens cleaners, and a remote control in case I want to take a picture of Kara and me together. Got to do that once in a while. And that's it, that's my uh, setup. Oh yeah, and uh, can't have a do a photo session without a mirror. A little portable mirror so the model can see herself and make sure that she looks great. So that's, uh, that's it. That's my, uh, little, uh, portable, <laughs> portable, whatever. Anyway, this is for me, this is portable. And it's, it's not even that heavy. You got a lot, of, you have a photo studio that you carry around with you and it's great for, for doing what I do, taking pictures or doing videos. If I do pictures and videos at the same time, uh, obviously it's more of a mishmash of stuff, but I usually only do one or the other. That's it. That's what I do. What's, that's what's in Marcus's bag. And uh, you can see the result of all this coming up. More great stuff coming up in the, uh, the result of me taking the stuff. Some pictures and videos that entertain you and give you ideas and make you hopefully get inspired to do more photography because... Life is so beautiful. It has all these things that should be captured. Moments to remember, you know, magical moments of life. That's it. So I hope this inspired you. Hope it learned a bit. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just a fun, goofy guy to watch. Right, I think I'm going to enjoy my time here a little bit more and not just take pictures the whole time. So yeah, this is the Seychelles. East of Africa, south of Dubai. Really nice, beautiful photo location. That's it. Stay tuned and we'll inspire you some more next week. So until then, have a great week. <laughs>